OK. Um, so in terms of um, time scales, um, this just provides um, kind of the both the national um, time scales, but also I've just added in kind of our individual time scales in terms of obviously this workshop today and the additional webinars that we've fitted in from a southeast perspective, both on the 15th of July and the 12th of August. <laughs> So you should have all received the paperwork and documentation. So the um, the bid guidance document and also the actual spreadsheet, which is the bid template. Um, they've been sat, sent out on, on a few occasions. Um, so hopefully you've all had a chance to read and digest them. The webinars on the 15th of July and the 12th of August just went through the detail of those. Um, and I'm not going to cover that level of detail today. I'm just going to do some highlights. So that was sent out at the end of July. There is the process um, throughout August. Sorry, is that somebody asking a question or? No, uh, can I ask people if, if you're not asking a question, if you could put yourselves on mute? Thank you. Um, so there is the process now between August and the 23rd of September for you to develop your bids. Um, the deadline is the 23rd of September, 5 p.m. for submission of the, um, the bids, the proposals. Um, and we have also put in uh, an additional webinar next Wednesday and invites have gone out for this, um, which is a Public Health England webinar on the inequalities resources in support of your bids. So um, Kate King Hicks gave a presentation on our webinar on the 12th of August and feedback from that webinar is that people wish to have some um, some extra you know, support and resources in terms of um, scaping the inequalities um, and so that we've put that in as an extra webinar that will be recorded and sent out. So if you're not able to attend, you'll get it following the webinar. Um, and then once you've submitted on the 23rd of September, the bids will be reviewed by a regional panel on the 8th of October. Um, Jenny and myself will be part of that panel, along with uh, the regional maternity team, the regional perinatal mental health team, Kent, sorry, Sussex Clinical Network. Um, just trying to think if I've forgotten anybody else. Um, uh, quite a broad panel day. Um, and I guess what's important to um, say is that unlike wave one wave two funding for specialist perinatal mental health services this is not a competitive process um so it's about making sure that the bids um are um cover the criteria um but it's looking for money to go out to support the systems rather than there's a pot of money and we have to decide who gets allocated it uh theresa do you want to ask a question your hands up yes please so is it yeah. a fair share allocation um, it is, I'll come on to, I've got the funding breakdown for Frimley on a later slide um, because I can't off the top of my head work out, uh, remember how they worked it out, but it's done on population basis and um, so it's not, so everybody will, depending on your population, it is your proportion as opposed to just everybody gets the same amount. Does yeah, that make so, sense? Yes, yeah, so yeah. but I've got your figures in a minute, so I'll come okay. to them. All right, thank yeah. you. No problem. Um, so once we've had the panel, that will get sent up to um, uh, back up to the national team. Allocations will be confirmed and then the funding will be begin to be released. Um, and then in line with um, the usual kind of monitoring processes, uh, funding will then be released further in 21-22. Next slide, please. So just pulling out some key points from the uh, maternal mental health services guidance notes, which is the document that you've previously been sent. So none of this is new information, it's all in there. If you've been on the previous webinars, again, I I'm just taking it from there. But just to clarify, so the expressions of interest are to be submitted on behalf of an STP, ICS or LMS area, and you need to have a nominated lead CCG. So you're eligible to put submit one bid for the area which could cover either part or the whole of the footprint. The key bit to this is if the proposal is to cover only part of the area then you need to provide the rationale as to why that is and how you you know you're going to bring all areas on board um, by 2023-24. 
So recognising that different services where you've got different service provision for specialist perinatal mental health and maternity, you might be at different stages of development for this within Frimley. Um, as are other areas, but thinking about, so what is, where are you aiming for as a whole system in the long term? Um, and then the other option is that you could have a, um, a partnership bid with more than one LMS STP ICS footprint, um, if that encourages, you know, that strengthens the bid. Um, uh, so something to consider. Um, you do have to have Alice, oh no, Alison, yeah. Oh no, yeah. sorry, Alison, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just wondering because particularly, I'm, I'm aware because um, we're Hampshire, but I'm aware that we do some. Obviously, we cover some of the ladies at Frimley. We also end up with one or two ladies over in the Surrey Hospital at Royal Surrey as well. Um, but isn't it? Wouldn't it make more sense? Um, when you're focusing on this that it's sort of it's going to be based I'm assuming it's going to have to be based around the midwives and hospital sites um, and it's going to be you want it to be this really the same equitable for all the ladies who are coming in and receiving it um, and it sort of feels a bit a little bit separate from I'm just really concerned about having a number of you know different teams or putting a bit of this in and getting a bit of the money, it just doesn't sit very comfortably no, so to me. It's just a collective bid. It's about working out how the different um, the different services are going to work together. So does that mean that we have to then obviously try and talk to all the other people, all, all the other teams yeah. and work out? Because so that's quite a big... Point of, so this is the point of today's workshop so that we've got all the services together and we can work out what people already have in place in terms of existing services and then what's the vision for Frimley in terms of what is going to be your baseline provision and uh, where depending on where people are what needs to go in to support that. Does that make sense? Yeah yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll carry on and then we'll have lots of time at the end of it, you know, the end of this presentation to kind of discuss the nitty gritty of what what we're going to do for Frimley as a system or what you're going to do for Frimley as a system, I should say. So as part of the bid, you do need to have um, very senior management commitment to the sustainability to fund the services by all the CCGs involved. Um, and that is a requirement as it was for wave, wave one and wave two funding um, in order to release the transformation funding. And I'll go through in a minute who needs to sign it off. Um, the transformation is for uh, funding is for revenue only. Um, and then as part of receipt of the funding, um, obviously everybody needs to commit to a programme of reporting and assurance. And that would follow, um, our expectation is that will follow a similar procedure to um, wave one and wave two in terms of reporting back on the finances that have been spent to date for each quarter and also in terms of additional women seen when the services are up, um, up and operational where you are in terms of um, relation to your plan of activity. Okay next slide please. So this, um, I know it's not very clear to read, you have this within the actual um, bid template on the spreadsheet. I've just literally pulled it off um, and obviously you'll have these slides afterwards so that you can see in more detail, but it's really just who needs to sign it off. So there needs to be the lead CCG, as I've mentioned, um, who will receive the funding on behalf of the system. It needs to have NHS England um, sign off as well, which would be us as the clinical network, um, provider trusts, trust, trusts and executive approval and signatory for the providers, um, clinical leads that you have within maternity and mental health, and also exec approval and signatory for the lead CCG um, as well. Then also there needs to be um, a confirmation in terms of the agreement of funding going forward um, so that the services will be funded on an ongoing basis um, as mentioned earlier and then there's some other bits that need to be done. Teresa, 
sorry, I'm, I'm going to sound like I'm the, a money girl. I'm not really. But uh, so the the transformation money is 18 months, if I've understood correctly, and then it will go into baseline. So the CCGs are committing to continue funding this provision when it's when in baseline. Yeah. yeah, lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Definitely. OK, next slide, please. OK, so in terms of the actual bid, um, applicants need to set out how the service will meet the cohort of women giving birth in the area with moderate to severe complex mental ill health, as Jenny's already mentioned, um, operating with a multidisciplinary skill mix. So either making it clear how you already have confidence that your workforce has the appropriate skills and competence or what you need in order to have a skilled and competent workforce. So what you can do within the bid is put in for extra um, money in order to support training um, and development, really. Um, so please do factor that into um, bids. Also, obviously, the service needs to be um, evidence based in line with nice guidance. Um, it needs to meet the needs of the local population and um, importantly, you know, one of the key things that it's looking for in terms of building on um, diverse co-production. Now, as Jenny has already said, some of this work would have, without COVID, would have previously been done in terms of thinking about where you're heading. I think the important thing that we would say is um, some of that scoping work has not been done because of COVID, but you can plan that into your bid as to how you will do the scoping work um, and would encourage you to obviously get involved with the maternity voices partnerships and your other service users um, within perinatal mental health. The national team are now putting a big emphasis on the targeting of health inequalities in the local area so looking at what those are and making sure that you understand your population basis um, and that's obviously why we've put in the additional support of the webinar next week from Public Health England um, to demonstrate improvements in care for women and families and obviously using a trauma-informed approach to care. Next slide please. Okay so in terms of the selection process as I've already mentioned there'll be a regional review panel held on the on the third on the Thursday the 8th of October. Jenny's put in the chat box. Um, we will, um, we're meeting next week to look at the scoring system for the bids and then that will be shared with you all ahead so that you know what the marking criteria is and that there's no surprises for you all. So that will be shared in due course. Um, we will be taking a pragmatic view to, uh, to this as, as it says. So um, it's really about getting funding out to support systems to deliver this um, as opposed to a competitive process where there's only you know, a certain amount of money in, and we decide who's best, who should best receive it. It is about trying to get money out to the systems for you all to use it. Um, the proposals will be assessed against outcomes, not surprisingly. The resources in terms of workforce um, uh, also training etc and then the risks in terms of the spending of money and the delivery of that um, and as mentioned previously the, the two key focuses that we would want to see within the bids is the focus on health inequalities and also co-production now and as I said you may not have done that work but it needs to be clearly articulated within the bid as to that that is part of your planning and scoping work okay next slide please OK, I'm not going to go through this, but this is within the um, guidance document. Um, it's got a list of all the different resources and that that are available to help you. Um, the kind of two key ones I'll probably pull out is the mental health LTP analytical tool, which I think my next slide, which has got the finances in, that's taken from the analytical tool. So do please go and have a look at that. And that can be found on the NHS collaboration platform, which is detailed um, at the bottom. OK, next slide, please. So um, according to the um, analytical tool, these are the indicative allocations. Um, so you, it can be broken down from both an STP ICS area or a CCG area. So at the bottom, obviously, you've got the combined STP ICS footprint, um, but you've also got the individual CCG um, funding allocation, uh, how that makes it up. 
how it's proportioned, should I say. In addition to that, so that's mental health funding. In addition to that, there's a 24% uplift, which will come from maternity transformation funding. So you need to factor that in, OK? Any questions about the funding, which I'm sure there is? <laughs> No? OK. Next slide then. Thank you. Um, so again, this is also in the um, guidance notes. So this is just an example indicative workforce um, per 10,000 deliveries in terms of giving you an idea of um, kind of workforce allocation in terms of staffing groups. Um, again, this might not be exactly what you use. It might not be what you feel you need for your service, but it's just another tool to support and help. OK. And I think that's the end of my presentation. Next. Lovely. So um, what I would suggest is um, probably for us all to turn on cameras if people are happy to, because um, obviously the rest of the session is going to be far more interactive in terms of um, discussion, discussion, really. Um, the proposal was that maternity services maybe talked about what they already had in existence and then um, for specialist perinatal mental health teams to also talk about their sort of visions, where they're at and um, kind of different proposals, really. So I don't know if that sounds like a good plan to people and whether um, maternity want to kick off in terms of what you currently have in place. Can, can I just ask one quick question before yeah, uh, it was about the funding and um, so for the LMS element is that within kind of our existing presumably it's not within our existing LMS allocation for this year presumably it's going to be something that we'll get but it will be through the so LMS we, transformation funding route. We've sought really hard to get clarification on this and so it has been confirmed it's 24 percent what we're expecting it to be is tranche three funding so it isn't taking out the funding you already have. It will be in addition. Yeah. And what I'm hoping will happen if everything aligns is that you're due to get your letters from the National um, Maternity Transformation Team on the 31st of August. And I'm expecting that there will be something written into that that will talk about this allocation. But we have had confirmation from the national teams that it is 24 percent. But no, it's not your existing budget that you've got this year. And that's 24% of the total of the 164 or 163, is it? Or was, was it 24%? Uh, so it's 24% on top of those allocations. On Of the allocation that you showed in the table. Yeah. 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 And and can you tell, is the, so the, the, fund, the funding that we're bidding for now for the first two years um, is, is obviously a kind of proportion of the 163, 164, but is there a, is there a kind of a, a figure in mind for, for people or so we've asked this because as you'll see from the table we have the uh, we have the allocations for uh, 23 24 22 23 i think it is but we don't have for this year and so we've asked this lots of times they've said to base it on those because if you look at them sean can you bring that slide back up sorry be a pain because you might there might some be some additional um setup costs yes. as well that will be maybe for the first year but you, you know you might not need them going forward yeah so there is the anticipation that people will ask. Thank you, Sean. So as you'll see, they don't vary that differently in terms of, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tweak, isn't it, in terms of the allocation. So if you based it around that figure with the 24% on top, and yes, you may well have additional monies, um, you know, in the setup in terms of the scoping and or training and education that you could add in. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, lovely. Thank you, Sean. But what I am hoping will happen at some point, but we have been waiting for some time, is to have, you know, just a, a sheet, an email that comes out from the national team confirming all of that. Um, so as soon as we have that, we'll send that to you. OK. So um, do we want to do a bit of an overview from the maternity services as to what you have in existence? Lovely. Who would like to... kick off. I don't know, we've got Emma and Sarah and Andrea, I think. I don't know whether any right, of you could so just describe what it currently currently looks like. Is there particular areas that 
we should I think it's I think yes. bereavement and yeah. yeah so I think the focus is at the moment we have three different services so we the three different CCGs that provide it is slightly different it's it's not the same service and um, I didn't know that I was going to be asked to present because the piece the key people that are part of that team are not on the call and are probably on are on leave so um you should know what services you provide. I don't know. I haven't been. This is the first meeting that I've been to. So sorry, I'm completely unprepared because I thought I was just joining to hear about what the plan was and actually how we were going to align it so that as a provider, uh, so, it's very difficult for women to go across um, um, you know, for the midwives to say, oh, actually, you don't live in that area. You don't have that postcode, so you can't have that. But Sarah, it looks like she's going to be able to respond. Thank you, Sarah, for stepping Jenny, in. Okay. You want to go first, yeah. Jenny? So, so I, it, I was I, just going to say it's it's not about what the um, offer is from the perinatal services because that's coming up in a minute. This is just about what's on offer from maternity and that would be in terms of what you're currently doing in terms of birth trauma, bereavement and you know if you remember that first slide anything that falls into that category. Okay. Okay so I'm actually here representing Liz Hopkinson who is our perinatal mental health midwife but unfortunately she's on leave. Um, so she is the only perinatal mental health midwife we have at Frimley Park Hospital. I'm, Emma, I'm not entirely sure what happens at Wexham. Um, I am part of the team um, called the ORCID team, and we are a team of eight midwives who support women with um, vulnerabilities. So that's um, be it mental health, um, trauma, um, other, th other medical issues and social issues. Um, and then we also have our bereavement team, um, which is a team of two midwives that are currently looking after them. Um, so that's what we have. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, that covers everyone that comes into our service, but obviously it's then filtered through different CCGs. So I, I'm not sure of all that technicality, but that's what we have. Yeah. So for Wexham Park, it's the same. So we have a perinatal mental health midwife um, at Wexham Park as well. So in total, from the, that slide, we have a midwife band seven on both sides. So that's, we tick that box. Um, we have a bereavement midwife. So the bereavement midwife on both sides is a full whole time equivalent, but we'll look after women who've had um, pregnancy loss and also to help support them in any future pregnancies. Won't specifically deal with the mental health. It's just the trauma of what the experience that they've gone through. Um, Sarah has alluded to the ORCID team, which is a brand new team, which has just been set up. Um, and we have got the Crystal team on the Wexham Park side. I think we need to be very clear that this is not a perinatal mental health team of midwives. This is a team of midwives that look after women with vulnerabilities, and that includes a broad spectrum. And probably every single woman on our catchment could fit into that team. So they have to hand pick out what they're going to do. So women who are known to the perinatal he mental health team may get involved in that team, but actually are probably not likely to because they're likely to be seen by the perinatal mental health, health specialist midwives and also the consultants. Um, so I think it's just very clear because we get very, it has been very confusing at the Wexham Park side that they think it's a specialist mental health team and it's not. Um, we've also got a counselling service for women at the Wexham Park site who have trauma, but it's not, um, and it's a separate um, entity, but it is specific women that we refer to that. That's you, um, And we've just um, advertised and appointed a counsellor at the Frimley Park site. It's a very new service and it's in its infancy. We've got one person um, and we've taken that funding out internally. We had no extra funding for that. We've just moved things a little bit around because we knew we had a need. That person will also see staff that have had um, tr very traumatic experiences because we need to look after the workforce. We also have lead consultants on both sites who pick up and do the clinics um, with um, perinatal health support from each provider and how they run that is probably slightly different. Um, but it's Zoe Jones on the Wexham Park site. And I can't remember Andrew, that Andrew can remind me who it does, who does it at Wexham. I can't remember the name. Mr. But that's it. Oh, Mr. Vathanen. But that is that is it in a nutshell as to what we've currently got, if that helps. And we're yeah. trying, we're trying to make sure that we've got consistency across the service. So it doesn't matter where you live, you will get the consistency as from across the LMS um, from our perspective. Yeah. And I think that's the trick with these bids, I think there's going to be some commonality of offer 
which is probably going to be around birth trauma and bereavement. But there may be some local differences and your scoping will pick that up. And if that's the case, that's a perfectly legitimate thing to be reflected in the bid. If one area has a, I don't know, might have more instance of, say, FGM and may need something very specific for that, that would absolutely be fine so long as you have supporting evidence yeah. for having a specialist practitioner or whatever it might be. So, but I think absolutely women need to be able to access equity of service for um, for birth trauma and bereavement. Thank you, Emma and Sarah. That was really helpful. OK, so from the uh, Theresa. Hi, can I just ask a, a question about the uh, counselling service that's at Wexham and obviously being replicated in, in Frimley? Is, what model do they work to? Do you know? I'm not quite sure what you mean. What, uh, what, what treatment modalities do they use? Do they use oh, a range or? I think so. Um, so all I know is that we've the, the 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 service that's at Wexham is well established, and it also includes um, parents who've got babies in the neonatal unit. So it's it's a bit broader, but there's a whole there's a team of them, um, and yes, they will do different things, and then they look at the sessions that they have and how they run that. Um, I mean, I can get the count. You can give you the councillor's contact, and we're just about to start to set that up at the Wexham Parks at uh, the Frimley Park site. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Maybe some of my colleagues from from. Berkshire will know who who they are. I don't have that. Yes, level of yes, yes. Or get us in contact with us, and we'll we'll give you the name, and she'll be able to speak to it all. That's fine. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or pause for questions? Second. Okay. So we um then hear from the specialist perinatal mental health teams in terms of how your thoughts in terms of um provision. I don't know whether Becky or Deborah from Berkshire want to take that. Do you want to have a go, uh, Becky, because you were on the call yesterday? <laughs> yeah, I was just, I, I, I was sort of hopping on just in case there's an overlap with the Bob bits. Um, I guess from our perspective, we work really closely with both Wexham and um, Frimley Park. Um, so uh, the service that is provided in that area, we kind of largely rely on those hospitals and having those links there. Um, we have a really well established trauma um, pathway that is working really, really well. And we're sort of aware of the setup in Wexham and Frimley that differs quite, I think it's more of a counselling service than sort of CBT and things. Um, so we are aware of it, although I wasn't, I wasn't aware that they kind of did neonatal input as well. So that's really helpful to know, because um, neonatal was something that we wanted to focus on. Mm. Uh, in terms of, we have the sort of clinics with um, Frimley, um, oh, sorry, with Wexham, not with Frimley at the moment. So we have a joint maternity obstetric clinic. Um, and I think that's something where we want to develop that. Um, just trying to think if there's anything else. I think our focus from feedback that we've had and from the referrals that we've had and where we feel women are missing out, we have the trauma, probably bereavement and sort of rainbow type um, sort of support for women who have had loss, but also removal and um, making sure that, that our trauma service is potentially sort of extended a little bit because the wait times are quite long. So we want to make sure that that is addressed um, and we've had to pull funding and resources from our current team to make sure that that gets going so we want to kind of balance that out a little bit um, and then yeah so it's, and then addressing the BAME community needs as well so yesterday during the Bob meeting we talked about um, the traveling community but also we've had refugees placed in Berkshire recently and sort of figuring out how we support those I think we've had 200 um, temporarily um, sort of in the Berkshire area for uh, the last couple of months, I believe. So um, making sure that we establish their needs and how we support them and what they're entitled to, but also um, other gaps that we've noticed are potentially homeless women and um, we're aware of the Rose Clinic, but also FGM, making sure that those women are supported. So there's a few areas that 
we know there are local needs. Um, and we know that there's a, a lot going on in the west side of Berkshire and perhaps not so much um, available in the east and we want to make that equitable. So, yeah, I think I hope that covers everything. Jump in, Teresa, if you know of anything else. No, I think I think you you covered all the things Sam told me I had to mention. So if you so if you hadn't if you hadn't joined, I would have had to try and blag it myself. But yeah, you did all of those things. Thanks, Becky. And I think um, the Bain community, just in relation to the trauma kind of pathway, sort yeah. of that's that's the bit that we want to focus on, isn't it? Is sort of because that's not representative at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I was I was saying in the Bob meeting yesterday that a few years ago. Sam and Bryony did um, a survey to make sure that our referral population and intervention population were representative of the general population. And we need to do that again. And, and anecdotally from observation, trauma pathway seems to be kind of not necessarily reaching the BAME communities. So that is something we want to work on. Yeah, sounds good. Susan. And Southern Health. Anybody want to report back, Alison? Yeah, I will if I can get my, my <laughs> microphone on. <laughs> Hi. Um, so I guess it's our involvement in North East Hanson Farnham has been relatively recent. Um, we have, we were before COVID doing a clinic over at the Aldershot Centre for Health. Um, that's not been running since COVID, but we have a designated uh, staff grade doctor who is working with patients um, on visionable and telephone calls and also a mental health nurse who is for that designated area. And then we're reliant on psychology from the team as a whole where it's needed to supply sort of meet needs in that area. We don't one of the difficulties, I suppose, for us is we haven't was finding a site um, to work from because actually in places like Primley, there isn't really very much space. So we've never really been able to set up anything over in Primley itself, although obviously we are in contact with Liz Treen for, for the ladies who come in our patch, which was partly why I was concerned about how how were we going to do this it sounds like Berkshire's got quite a quite a setup going already um, but I know from experience over in Portsmouth which I'm aware is a different area where we've set up a sort of maternal mental health type of clinic there and then have got psychology input it is quite important to be able to access somewhere where you and the obstetrician and the mid specialist midwife and everybody and the psychologist can actually meet and see patients or have some link to see patients so that was sort of a little bit what was worrying me how do we how do we do how do we do this um how do we do it so it isn't inequitable um you know where one team maybe is doing something but another team either can't because there isn't the facility or is you know i'm i don't know um, and i think we're very early in the in the scoping process as well. So it just concerns me about how do we pull this all together for the 23rd of September in reality, um, because we haven't realistically got anything up and running at the moment, not in that part of the county. Emma, I'm aware you've got your hands out on. Let Jenny just respond. Do you want to respond, Jenny? Yeah, I was just gonna say, I think that's where using some of the transformation funding for um, some project time to scope it out, because, you know, I think estates can be a massive issue and just having some dedicated time to look at that and, and what that means when there's potentially three different providers here, mm. um, which sort of complicates the estates issue, doesn't it, potentially? Mm if you're all trying to get um, a seat at the table, so to speak, and that there's already restraints on space. So so if, if you did, if you decided to go down that route and put in for some some project time to scope it out, then looking at the estates issue is going to be a really key part of that, I think. Um, so how, how would we do that, Jenny, then? Because I'm just thinking if we're, you know, sort of 
we realistically are not going to be doing all this for the 23rd of September. We could identify there's a need to to scope this so out more would, and link in with the other three. Exactly that. Yeah. You would write that into your plan for your bid. So you would right. give time scales of, of what you're going to scope and when you're going to scope it by. So you right. probably in your bid you need to have um, a time scale of when you see that you will have a operational service, but you can kind of work backwards from that. Okay. Um, yeah. Emma, I'm going to go to you because I'm, I'm aware you've had your hand up for a while. So, uh, that's fine. I think, and also just to let you know that um, we're running very differently how we were previously, so before COVID. Yeah. So the estates issue is different. Yeah. Um, we do have some community hubs, which we're trying to make sure that we've got in the long term, but also we have much more space at the Frimley site now because we've had to do other things to other services. So it's a really good opportunity for if people want to come in. So I just want to say, actually, we'll, and we'll work with you how, as how to how we do that. I think what from our perspective is if we've got the clinic with the consultant and the um, midwife, it's about whether the two providers can get to that at that time. I think that's more that what the issue is. But I think we're open for discussions or whether we take this, the um, clinic off site and how we would do that. So I think the scoping would be brilliant. But there is it just doesn't feel like it's going to be as difficult as it was previously. Okay. Sarah, have you still got your hand up? No, that's OK. I just wanted to check. That's OK. okay. Yeah, I, I think. You know, unfortunately, uh, COVID has, has given us a lot of issues, but there are some opportunities now, aren't there, in terms of things like thinking about the clinics. Teresa, you've got your answer. So if, so if in the bid we propose something that we, we use some of the bid for scoping and we discover that actually it's not the issue that we thought it was, um, and then we won't want to deliver something different, yeah. what is the process for that? And what will be the site? How will we get that approved? Or will it just be left to local providers so, to be able to make those changes so what would normally happen in this situation i think the the national team and ourselves are very realistic that what you think you might need now may not be what you end up with mm. and what would normally happen in those processes is yes you would have to report in terms of if you're changing the way you're going to use allocated money in that but as long as you justify why and your scoping would give you your reasoning and everything i don't i don't see that being an issue um, and certainly when I've, you know, had similar pots of money that we've given out previously for like uh, children, young people's mental health transformation, that that has been the case. Or sometimes what you anticipated spending in one quarter actually doesn't happen. You either spend more money early because things move faster or vice versa, as long as you keep your reasoning and that updated and there's a clear audit pathway, that, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you. And I guess there may be some economies of scale. I mean, I don't know how easy this would be to do on the ground, but it may be that you could work collaboratively with some potentially more expensive posts so that you shared something across. Um, and but everybody could access that resource. Um, and it may be also that your scoping shows that you need some very specific targeted members of staff for, for certain areas particularly in terms of health inequalities so peer support workers that can um, access hard to reach groups for example that that sort of thing so we're really aware that you won't have all the answers now we absolutely get that I think it's about buying yourself some time to plan it um, because I know this is a quick turnaround as it always is but actually it's money that you can do this scoping with so you can buy yourself some some time to do the scoping because these services have to be provided by 23 24 anyway so this is a good opportunity to test some things out because we don't know we don't know what we're going to end up with because we really don't understand the need yet that's what you're scoping and, and pilots will will show us I think. Alison you've got your hand up. Sorry um, I was just thinking in terms of what Jen was saying about you know shared monies certainly if we were in maternity clinics I would imagine that the the mix of 
patients, ladies, would be from different patches. So it would be very important that we did have someone who was vested in by everybody concerned, really. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it makes sense. Um, and, and also in terms of how the funding will flow down, it, it's just about the, it's almost about the service level agreements, isn't it, across the system in order mm. to do that. Yeah. Um, hi, it's it's Jackie from Southern Health. I've um I'm leading on the bid for the whole ship area, um, and I just wanted to talk about um the pathways that we've been looking at and um through our maternity um psychology service pilot. I didn't know if that's the right time to bring that. Yeah, that'd be helpful, Jackie. That forward. So we're we're looking at the three pathways around a, a birth trauma service. Um, we've got the uh, bereavement service and how we can look to develop um, supporting the the midwives, the um, mental health midwives and how we can work with the bereavement midwives. Um, and we've also got a pathway around the anxiety and how we support, support mums or women with um, anxiety as well as the tocophobia. Um, sorry, this is all very new to me. So I'm just um, trying to bring to the table what we're doing and how how we're looking to work to do it. Um, and I didn't. Um, I'm a bit stuck because I'm. I just thought um, I'm just going to go off because I'm a bit nervous and I don't know <laughs> where I need to be. But it, I'm just trying to learn the models um, that Hannah has developed with the pilot, and it's been very successful, and the outcomes have been great. Um, and she's got a whole time um, clinical psychologist who's who's been delivering to, across the whole region. Mm. And I think we'd be looking to replicate um, something similar if that's what the other areas would be interested in working together to develop. And I think that's where Jenny was talking about the economies of scales and bringing all our yeah. um, pathways together. And then but how can we share? Yeah, because it yeah. It feels like um, to do this sort of complex work, you're going to need quite a high level psychologist for the overall supervision. But you might not want to, you know, it, it might be that one whole time equivalent between all of you or using some of the resource that's already going to be funded for in Southern, you know, that, that that might spread across. So there's I think we need to look imaginatively at it um, to make sure that the um, there's enough sort of seniority in there to support all these other um, members of staff that are carrying out quite complex work. Theresa. Um, I suppose I think Becky mentioned it earlier we've got a we've got a really comprehensive uh, birth trauma pathway within within Berkshire and, and maybe if anybody is interested in in hearing a bit more about that we could put them in touch with our yeah. clinicians that have yeah. set that up and established that and and, and you, you're right there may be some some opportunities to extend that beyond the Berkshire boundaries if, if that's something that uh, people are interested in because um, yeah. our, our area of development there is really around our, our BAME population uh, but also counteracting the costs the additional cost because of the demand and the the great outcomes we get we have moved some of our core funding into that service and we will we'll need to sort of adjust that as we work through this bid yeah sorry i can't use my <laughs> um hand up thing but i was just going to say i think i like i like the idea of um some shared posts yes um the services if you know if people are kind of um willing to go down that direction and I think that would help us generally actually with the kind of challenge of having yeah. three different services it you know I think that would really um, um be a positive step so and then as certainly what, sorry Liz go I was going to say certainly from um you know thinking about system transformation that would be looked upon very favorably in terms of system you know services yeah. coming together to work as a system absolutely yeah I'm just conscious. I don't think we've heard from SABP. I didn't know whether they had anything particular to. Oh yes, yeah. Who's sorry, on? yes. From sorry. Hi. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's interesting to hear from from Berkshire and Southern Health, and I think we probably share similar um, 
similar view certainly to Southern Health in terms of the challenges of space, I think is going to be one of the issues. And I was thinking also that from SABP point of view, our, the proportion of, of um, people that we see from Frimley are um, small compared to the rest of the Surrey area. So actually having that um, joined up um, approach and with, with all the services involved, I think would definitely be be worth considering and how that will how that will pan out and, and how we can work uh -huh. together will be will be interesting. But I think that would certainly be something that we would be um, keen to do. Because I think when you look at the funding as a small ICS, there's not a massive amount yeah. of posts per provider. Rather. Yeah. So working collaboratively might might be a, a great solution. Mm. Mm, yes, in some ways um, it would be trying to I as as it works now actually with our psychology pathway for trauma over in Southern Health, it's a little bit separate from the perinatal other work. So I was thinking if if generally there is a trauma pathway that's rather more specific, then that could could work because otherwise you're going to have to have it going back to all the perinatal teams and things as well. And it suddenly starts getting much more complicated again. But if the trauma pathways were almost a little bit independent, then maybe that would be a good way for them to be able to, they still get supervision and things from whoever, but um, you know, it might be an easier way to work. Becky. Yeah, I was just gonna say Jackie, our um, birth trauma pathway is slightly separate from our perinatal team. So they're part of the perinatal team and we fund them, but actually they tend to align themselves more with the general trauma pathway team. So um, there is a little bit of kind of a, not a divide, but a slight separation there. Um, so yeah, possibly similar to what you have. And then we also have our psychological birth care plans as well, which are done by the perinatal team, um, psychology team. So again, slightly different is for those women who have severe um, fear of childbirth and perhaps don't have time to work through the trauma. So we provide them with a, a birth care plan from a psychology perspective to help support them with a more positive birth experience. And actually the outcomes have been brilliant because then the trauma is almost kind of treated to some extent and they're not needing that sort of trauma input in 20 sessions afterwards. So we have two slightly separate um, systems for that. One of the things that I don't think I've probably mentioned earlier as well was just to say in terms of, you know, I talked about the additional money that you could um, request in terms of training and that building that in, but also in terms of obviously project management as part of the scoping. Mm -hmm. um, and that sometimes in previous bids that have been done sometimes gets missed uh, for that early stage, but that is obviously the opportunity to build that in. And I guess I'm going to ask a question in terms of, um, do you have a plan in place um, currently as to who is going to pull this bid together? Dare I ask? <laughs> so there's probably some thinking that we need to do in terms of, you know, how. So it looks like there's a there's there's good willingness for everybody to work together. There's a um, you know, there's there's stuff that could be scoped and thinking about how posts could be run across the system and that. But in terms of the practicalities of doing the bid, there probably needs to be some agreement about who is going to who's going to take the lead for that. Yeah, I'll have a conversation uh, uh, with Andy Erskine and Nigel Woods and get some agreement about who's going to lead across the system, and then said that get him to send somebody something out later today, tomorrow at the latest. Lovely. That'd be really helpful. Yeah. Just, Jackie, just just the Sorry. question because is the um in the documentation Sorry. the is the the bids are being kind of prepared by by predominantly by this by services is that is that right? 
but I think if you talk to Nigel and um, Andy Eskin, they'll probably <laughs> point in my direction. <laughs> but um, my understanding, because it, it's quite specialist, isn't it? So I'm, I'm feeling that it does need to be led by yeah, yeah the experts. That's yeah, I'd, I'd agree. I think the experts need to pull it together, but somebody needs to then amalgamate, make sure it's all signed off for the governance of the bid. Mm. Yeah. yeah. The suggestion um, oh, we have. Sorry, thing from. Oh no, carry on. Sorry. Um, no, it's just Jackie from Southern House. So, um, Gemma was happy for us if to be put forward as a lead puller together, um, and to work with everybody. If that was what everybody would be happy doing, but obviously we can have that conversation. So Jackie, as as well, I know um, it's Alison here, so we don't really know each other. No, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just aware Hi, that we come at this from, from different angles, so we probably need to sort of touch base as well to make, because I know Joe uh, Spores asked me if I'd sort of look at it from, if you like, the consultant um, specialist angle of what was going on. So we probably need to be talking to each other. <laughs> yes, no, that's great, Alison. I think we reckon, yeah, we need to be doing that. Um, and I guess, so one of the discussions that we had with Bob yesterday was about whether, um, you know, there's a kind of, uh, bearing in mind the timescales, and we appreciate they're very tight, but kind of a, a small working party with, a, you know, some task and finish meetings just to try and get it all sorted, appreciating that different people need to take different actions in terms of getting it signed off by the relevant people but whether you want to take that forward as a process just in order to keep things moving forward when, um, you know, we're now, gosh, four weeks away till it needs to be in. And I think there's quite a lot of holidays as well going on, certainly mm. at our end. Yeah. I was just going to ask, um, do you, so, so I, I know there's the um, pilots and then there's the fast followers and then there's the kind of the next stage. Um, are we <clears throat> do we submit the bid um, for the ICS or the LMS? Um, you know, it, so the whole LMS is you know being submitted as as a pilot or as a fast follower, but with you know with with all that caveat that we're doing a lot of scoping at the same time, or so, so we put a kind of a banner over it that yeah, we're yeah, bidding yeah. as a whole system to be in one group or the other, but with. Yeah, you know, some some yeah, some parts of the system might go sooner than others. Yeah, and to be honest, I think like the early implementers were really easy to spot um, because they were places that already had a service running that they could just springboard from and and grow. But after that, I don't. I think there's not a very clear demarcations now between you know everybody else is in the same boat really I don't think there's a specific fast follower route or whatever so um, I wouldn't worry too much about that because that was more relevant when we had a whole year lead in and we could clearly set some people off early and then have fast followers probably about this time of the year but it's all melded into one because of covid so you will be asked so on on the actual bid template it will say are you an early implementer or fast follower so my advice would be to tick fast follower because it only gives you the two options but yes you build all your scoping work into it yeah Teresa just just a question is there any flexibility in these time scales in terms of the national team no no that is what has been set but they are taking that you know that pragmatic view as in in the past they would have expected bids where every the scooping that's all been done and obviously mm -hmm. we're saying build that into your plan rather so, than so, so that's the stuff. flexibility that yeah. that's being agreed at the centre okay thank you yeah because I think it will it will be difficult to bring anything very definitive by the 23rd of September in reality I think it will be impossible to bring it to bring anything definitive um to, let's let's be honest we <clears throat> we we want to do the right thing and I, and i think there's with those time frames it makes it likely or possible that we do the wrong thing so so i think i would encourage everybody when they're thinking about what their local contribution might be is that we are we are realistic um and mm -hmm. the, extend that scoping period for as long as possible 
Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and I suppose my thinking where I would I would be looking to, to scope through till early in the new year and then do a bit of planning. Absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. And then look at delivery in, in 21, 22. What year are we now? Are we 20, well, yeah, 21, 22. Yeah. And I think that's I think that's really feasible. I, you know, I, I wouldn't worry yeah. about that. I think what is being looked for is that there is a vision as a system as to where you want to get to and that you have a, a plan in place, be it that you need to scope out exactly what your end point is, but you have a plan in place to get to a final operational um, service. What that final operational service will be determined by your scoping, but that you are working together as a system, you're joined up and you have a plan. I, th- I think you know that's what needs to be asked for, really. Thank yeah. you. And so alongside I, that, I'd want to put some pushback about telephone consultation, telephone consultations and assessments not counting. I, I just think that is, the, sorry, Jenny knows this. I've been bothering her. <laughs> no, I, I just like think it is the most really ridiculous know. rule. Um, we that, really have to get um, the whole country behind us on this because um it's such a big issue and i know it's sort of probably outside the scope of what we're talking about today but um thank you so much for your feedback teresa because that was really helpful and i don't know who it's jane isn't it from from surrey if um i'd encourage um yeah. surrey as well to co- collate information about the numbers of women that refuse video and the reasons why because I would say if video is offered and refused it should still count but we're still having that pushback so let's get as much information as we can and take it forward. Yes, yeah, I, I was just going to say on the return um, on the trajectories that we just had to do last week um, we, we did articulate that as well. Um, oh good. From the yeah. 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 We're saying it everywhere now. I yeah. think it's just, <laughs> we just need a bit of momentum <laughs> because if we it, we'll be looking through yeah. through these bids obviously to make the best use of technology but we also need to make sure that it is around patient choice. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, and if, if we're trying to address some health inequalities, we actually put another load of health inequalities in mm. if we insist that uh, consultations have to be either Ooh. face-to-face or, absolutely. Absolutely. Be, or digital. To, yeah, I love what you've just said. We have to make sure we capture that. and, and Like it's recorded. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, um, right. and we will be doing our, so our overarching, you know, we do our what we're fortnightly now monthly webinars. I think um, right, so it's November, isn't it, Jenny? That we'll we'll be focusing on different ways of working in that. Yeah. 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 Becky, I was just going to say, I guess at the moment we don't know what outcomes we're going to be needing to report back, but it definitely, as Teresa says, we don't want to be replicating headaches and systems that processes that don't work. Um, but I guess as well, when this is being set up, it's worth thinking about what outcomes we potentially could be asked to monitor and how we're going to be doing that as well. Yeah, definitely. We're going to have an extra webinar for specialist services around data. Um, so bring all your questions to the one for the Mary. That will be the early October. Um, so, but yeah, I think that's important. And all we've heard at the moment is it's about numbers. So it'll be those numbers and narrative reports and I know Southern are using some particular birth trauma things that obviously you guys will be aware of as well um, but I don't think we've heard anything about specific outcome measures um, so it might be the normal like, narrative report plus numbers plus risks type of return oh, Michael's put something in the chat box Alison have you still got your hand up is that a new hand? No. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. It's an old hand. <laughs> the use of terminology we now have that we never had before. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a new hand or an old hand. <laughs> okay. So, I, I mean, I guess from my point of view, it seems I think there's a really positive approach, to be fair, you know, that everybody's willing to work together I think there's some good opportunities in terms of system working and potential system post that I think the difficulty as we know is pulling together the bones of a bid in this time scale but I think build the scaping work into it build some project management into it 
definitely i think um Teresa, like the times girls that you were talking in terms of scaping and that i i think that seems wholly reasonable um so i i guess it's just within this next you know kind of four weeks um maybe how you know getting together those meetings in place in terms of sort of task and finish to pull it together and and get the sign off yeah, it would be worth just um because I think we had a volunteer from Southern Health um to to potentially lead. And so if we could maybe just capture that and maybe if there's a kind of um volunteer from the other two services and from the maternity service to be just the contact person. Because I think it's gonna be difficult. I think it's great we've kind of set the scene here, but it's probably gonna get, be difficult to get that bigger group together. So yeah. you know, if we, we we can identify some people that maybe don't have too much annual leave over the next couple of weeks. And what we also said on the Bob call was that this initial thing, as much as we absolutely are going out to scope it and we'll talk to as many stakeholders as we, as we need to to do that, the initial group that's going to get this bid together Good probably done. needs yeah. to be quite small um, yeah. just to, because of the time scale. You, you just don't have time for masses of wider consultation at this stage. But um, that's going to be written into it anyway so you know that you've got that covered off down the line yeah and I'm conscious I'm off after today um I'm off next week um and tomorrow so I just I didn't want it to kind of pause as well so it's should we just agree our immediate ne next steps um so is it about um identifying the key people for each organization and and maternity is that is that a helpful thing to do now so that they could be um called together i think that would be really helpful yeah if, if people are kind of comfortable doing that I, should we and it, maybe it's just kind of checking that everyone's happy with this approach really as well so so we, we're going to pull up together a bid for frimley hopefully southern health possibly leading with representation with a small small group of representation from the other organizations the focus of the bid is going to be scoping and how we're actually going to work system-wide where we've got you know three three different um services and you know putting in some, some good project management and um, support um with maybe to start some services you know kind of later on in this financial year and um to look at shared posts as well that again i, I really like that um that proposal I mean, should it should it be? I'm, I'm not being difficult, but I'm, should Southern Health be leading this, or I'm not sure where Berkshire is with all of this, because it sounds like they've already got more stuff running. But I'm not. I may be wrong with that. I mean, what 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 do Berkshire feel about this? Well, I like Jane. I'm on leave now for, <laughs> for till the tenth. <laughs> um, I think you're, you're probably right. We have got some of this already in place because we were we were one of the first waves to go with our perinatal service uh, sam danish poor is our service manager and will be the link so so maybe becky and and deborah can give just an update back to sam um, and connect her in um i i think we i think we will need some business support so i i can talk to our business development team see whether they've got any Mm. Uh, body available that can help pull all this together and coordinate those meetings yeah. uh, and take the actions so if I do that and I'll, I'll send an update back through to to the group if that's okay the only thing I was concerned about for, for you Berkshire guys is that because you kind of straddle the two ICS's and whether that um, makes like double the work for you so I, I didn't know if it was actually going to be easier to have someone else leading on the Frimley one I to think yeah I think Becky, Becky, Becky might know the answer to that Becky yeah I think it would be really helpful for someone else to lead on the Frimley bits because there are kind of three people involved or three systems involved there so I think our um hope was that someone else would be willing to lead on this bit and then we can link in as much and support as much as we can yeah yeah i thought because i know you are in quite a unique position mm -hmm. going across we've got other places where um providers cross into another ics but then they're the 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 only provider in one patch i 
you, you've got multiple providers in both of your patches, so your life is is quite tricky in terms of maternal mental health services. But we'll be looking to you because you'll be the pioneers. So, so Jackie, are you taking that on then? I know I'm away for uh, a couple of weeks while this is all going on. Jackie? Yeah, no, we can. I'm picking. I'll meet with um, Gemma tomorrow, Gemma Tyndall, and um, yeah, we can pick that up for everybody and try and get um, what's already in place, and then the scoping bit that everyone's talked about, and sort of work together to identify everything. Really, yeah, oh. we can do that. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. So, can can we have some names for Jackie then of people that are around, just so that we that represent the services that need to be so sam for berkshire lovely who for surrey and who for maternity i'm around for surrey so that's fine oh Thanks. lovely that's jane lovely Thanks, jane. so for so for maternity i sadly i'm actually on leave next week but i'm back on the 7th um but um danielle perkins and Andrea Anderson are the heads of midwifery for each site and they would both need to be involved because they'll understand or they'll be able to get the information or go out and seek it from other people but I just think it needs to be at a higher level because it's if you involve the people on the shop floor they just get embroiled in what they've already got so yeah Danielle and Andrea can in you the first put point, those um, in the chat box for us yeah sure and I will um I will also you can copy me in so I can pick stuff up I can, you know, check, check where we are. But yeah, we'll do. Okay, I'll put their emails in for you. Thank you. They, they are both on the call, actually. So. Oh, lovely. You've got them both, yeah. Everyone. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, Danielle. Danielle. I can't see Danielle. <laughs> okay. So, are people happy that they've got a plan of action and know who who's to be in the list to take forward? Yeah, I, I think so. And, and is it is it Jackie that is is? Thank you, as Jackie. Hi. Um, I'm I'm back after next week, so I'm happy to work, you know, really closely with you to try and, you know, give any system information. And I work with Nige. Nige is kind of in in our team as well. So cool. Yeah. Thank you. It's just really me yeah, getting getting to know who everybody is and. <laughs> getting together pulling it all together i think with what we're doing in 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 for ship is pulling together all the pathway from the pilot and um how we're linking in with everybody so i think this one we're looking at what you've already got in place yeah, yeah. and and i guess where people are working on other bids that might be you know further progressed if they could share that information mm -hmm. because yeah. we might be able, although we <clears throat> will probably be a little bit further away from implementing some of it but it just might you know, give us yeah, a, that might be useful. A good, yeah, good yeah. idea of what we're trying to get towards. Yeah. 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 Okay. And just one of just... you all is has uh, it, is there any sort of interface with with um your IAPT services and and birth trauma work or bereavement work? Is there anything in this area? Um, nodding heads. In in Berkshire, we have a. a really well established enhanced trauma pathway so our IAPT service will will deliver uh, interventions under the supervision of our specialist trauma service so Fantastic. our complex trauma goes into uh, our specialist service but there are some uh, women that are currently managed through IAPT with the supervision through the specialist team. Marvellous well we might be looking to you to present at a future webinar then that's lovely to hear Okay. <laughs> I was just going to say we we have all the IAP services information on our website, and I'm sure the community midwives, you know, can direct um, women to IAP services as well. So yeah, yeah, and they do they are part of this group, but they may not have you know come um, today because it's quite focused. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so in terms of um taking it forward we will leave this to you to take it forward and um, if there's specific things that you need in terms of information or you want to ask any queries or whatever then please obviously come back to to Jenny and I um, 
please do make sure if at all possible you've got representation on the public health uh, webinar next week or at least you know get a chance to look at the recordings afterwards in terms of the health inequality stuff um do feel free to invite us to task and finish meetings if that's helpful but we might not because we're obviously coordinating all the other areas we might not be able to get to there but if there's specific things that you want to ask following then please let us know um good luck with it i think i think you've got a really strong um case you know in terms of uh, where you will end up i know there's lots of work to be done in terms of that scaping but i think um the willingness and what's already in the system i think there's some great stuff to build on mm exciting yeah definitely okay. and thank you to liz and jenny for bringing this together it's it was causing me quite a, a headache so <laughs> thank you for getting us to this point no oh, problem no problem welcome. thank you everybody for giving up your lunch hour and that to uh, to be here so um yeah so unless there's any other um further questions whatever i will give you all 10 minutes back of your life so that you can go and grab a cup of coffee or have a comfort break or whatever but um Thank you all. Thanks okay, very much. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. You.